I'm going to be talking about the projection effect today. You can see in the screenshot I'm sharing with you that that comment, those two comments by the gentleman Charlie S., although to me uh, not very interesting in content, did spur me on to speak about this. It seems, and I've talked about this before, that so many people, particularly men, are just nonplussed, baffled, bemused beyond uh, recognition, beyond uh, any uh, any level of, of measurement that I could actually say and think the things that I do, that I actually mean what I say and say what I mean, that I act upon what I mean and say. It's just so baffling. It's so baffling that they come up with comments like this. Now, he goes on to be to talk about some sort of void, and this can only be filled with a woman. I think we all have voids, and I've talked about this, and Barbara says as well. I think men, deep down, have a void to connect intellectually, ultimately. As Barbarossa intimated in that video, his most recent one of his most recent videos, the very excellent one, uh, humanity first and foremost. What are the memories you actually have of the past, of random fucks you've had with girls or even fucks you've had with, with girlfriends? My ex-wives, and that's Stardust talk, by the way. I always refer to my exes as ex-wives. My ex-wives, uh, when I think I, their faces are completely blurry to me. I can barely remember what they look like. Uh, the sex, even in the best cases, uh, one of them who was violent, psychotic, and at the same time very good in bed, I, so such a long time ago, I don't even remember that. However, however, I do remember striking conversations with individuals, the vast majority of whom have been men, uh, insightful conversations, uh, moments of intellectual bonding, and so on and so forth. The, the pair bonding effect, you know, fucking and, uh, and what have you, this just withers and fizzles out into, the, into a, a haze of, the, of a distant memory. That, I think, is the void, as Bar Russ has intimated, that, that we have as men, much more so than uh, this, this a void for a woman. Which is effectively what he's saying, the void for the need to reproduce. I mean, that's all he's saying, basically. But, yeah, the level of bemusement and, and just incredulity that, that I could actually believe and say what I say and do what I do, it's just, it's too much for them. Now, there's another element to this, and this is the the comfort of the collective lie. And we've seen this in religion throughout the ages, particularly in, in modern times. It's okay as long as everyone else believes the lie. You see, that's 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 the modus operandi here. It's okay if everyone else believes the lie. It's okay if I lie to myself. And what men going their own way are doing is divesting themselves of this lie and saying it, well, telling the world how it actually is. And this, once again, seems to upset people, but also it, 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 it causes a rupture in their collective lie. You know, like a large religious body of religious people who, you know, who for the first time experience uh, the true nature of their religious delusion. It makes them feel good, but then when you when you puncture that that bubble that they've been living in, they, they all start getting upset. Now, there's no doubt that feminism has been, capital F feminism, has been disastrous upon Western civilization and now upon Eastern civilizations as well. It's just, it's been a giant mess. But, you know, we live in reality. We need to accept things on their own terms. We need to accept things for what they are. And it happened. Feminism happened. So what is the positive? And I'm not saying feminism itself is positive. The positive is the information we have gathered. Feminism has revealed to us the true nature of the female. That females en masse, whether they call themselves feminists or not, will do certain things 
without any hesitation, without any regard to their men, or their men in their lives, or men at whole uh, on, uh, at, at large. So feminism effectively has been a revelation. And the, pe the people who are, who are always ranting on about anti-feminism and the, the traditionalists as well, I mean, these are people who, as I say, I liken to a body of religious people who have had their religious bubble of delusion popped and refuse to, refuse to accept reality. They want to go back to the, the religious bubble, but it can't be returned to. It's gone because the bubble's been popped. It's, there's a rupture in the bubble. They want everyone to just join in the collective lie to make themselves feel good. This is why people fall for the, the ghost of Karl Marx. That Karl Marx, this is why they believe, although they've never actually said this, although you, if they were, <laughs> it could be easily uh, extracted from some of their claims that Karl Marx had a time machine and journeyed back 200,000 years in the past to manipulate early homo sapiens that Karl Marx this uh, Hegelian dialectic that uh, and so on and so forth that that Karl Marx somehow and communism and socialism have 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 are the the the, the keys to understanding feminism now no one's denied that there's a relationship between the two but it has to go deeper. It has always has to go deeper than some me merely political ideology. What is it about then, if you're going to make the claim, Karl Marx and communism and socialism, that makes it so appealing to women? What is what the biological quality characteristic of females that allows them, or rather permits them, to just fall for it without uh, very much thought, without thinking twice about it? So, but but that's a that's a one size uh, fits all solution. Oh, it's Karl Marx. The, defeat the left, the same thing. Defeat the left, everything's solved. This is how primitive religious people think. The great Satan. Defeat Satan. He's gone. Everything's going to be good. Complex questions with simple answers. But complex questions beget complex answers more often than not. So. When we talk about, when I'm talking about projection, this desire for our collective lie, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Be it the religious collective delusion or the collective delusion about the biological realities we face as men and women. People want to go back to the lie. Feminism popped a hole in the bubble. There is a rupture and the rupture is just oozing now. It's impossible to repair. As I've said many times, barring civilizational class, we're not going back to the alleged good old days. So it falls to us to reap lessons from that ruptured bubble, rather than lamenting the fact that the bubble is there and uh, it's been ruptured and there's a, a gaping wound or a hole in it. I mean, th that's not going to bring us forward. We're not going to make progress that way men or women, by lamenting the past, by ruining the day that feminism uh, took its politicized form, that doesn't help anyone. What will help us is understanding the biological nature and motivation of men and women. Not pining, as this guy uses the term, pining away. <laughs> pining away for a woman. I guess this is what this guy does. He, he's pining away for a woman. This is this is uh, you know, monkey monkey I uh, see no evil hear no evil uh, speak no evil. This is just shut shut your eyes to the world, shut your ears to the world, shut your mouth to the world, and just believe. Feminism, unfortunate as it's been, has been a revelation, and now we, for the first time since possibly antiquity because I believe the ancients had a much more realistic, realistic perspective on these things, we are empowered with the knowledge to deal with each other effectively on a bio, purely biological basis, which of course leads into culture and the political institutions we have as men and women. 
And given that the stakes are so high, we don't really have a choice. We have to deal in reality. But like I said, just like the religious religionists uh, who uh, revel in their collective delusion, you'll have people re reveling, both men and women, in the collective delusion of romantic love, of pair bonding, of, of all this silliness that only existed because it had to, because without it, no one would have survived very long. And that's gone. That era is gone. We're living in 2013. The bubble has a gaping, rupturing, ruptured wound. It's weeping blood. Do you want to constantly stare at it and, and, and talk about it and talk about the good old days? Or do, you, do we want to move forward? Do we want to move forward and understand things as they actually are? Now, a lot of this is repetition, but sometimes repetition is very valuable. One point I would like you to take away from this uh, is that people will settle for lies and delusions if everyone else believes them because it makes them feel good. People are not necessarily, rarely, after ver veridical content. They're not necessarily chasing after, after the truth. If the truth makes them feel good, they'll accept it. If not, they'll reject it. Now, the idea that we all have this void pining away from, uh, on a final note, it's, if you actually, I've said this many times, if you actually understand women, no such void will exist. I guarantee it. If you actually understand the calculus involved, you will not have this void. Ergo, this gentleman certainly does not understand women. And in the words of the immortal Barbarossa, that's all I got to say for now. More to come.